Hello everybody, what is going on? My name is Steggy, and in this video, I'm going to be telling you what the best camera lens is for live streaming. Now, all the products I'll be talking about in this video are linked in the description panel, so if you're interested in any of them, you know where to find them. Now, if you've seen my other video on what the best camera is for live streaming, you know that the brand to beat is Sony. The Sony Alpha mirrorless cameras just work wonderfully with products like Elgato CamLink that allow them to be used for live streaming. Namely because they have a full clean HDMI out that works even with autofocus, which a lot of brands like Canon struggle to do. And it's also very easy to find cheap dummy batteries out there so you can power these cameras indefinitely when you're plugging them into a power source. Now since the release of this video, I've received a ton of questions on what lens I recommend for the Sony cameras. And, you know, in general, there seems to be a lot of questions and misconceptions about lenses because it can be quite daunting to a new user of what the right lens to buy is. And so we're going to go over all the things you need to know in this video. Now, the two main things I'll be discussing in this video are focal length and aperture. There are other components that go into what makes a lens quality, but the focal length and the aperture is what really seems to trip most people up. Uh, and so that's mostly what I'll be covering uh, before going into a live demo of different lenses and the effect that they have, because I think that'll be the most helpful is to see them in a real time use environment. Now this video is mostly gonna be focused on Sony lenses. However, aperture and focal length are universal. So if you have another brand of camera like Canon, you can find similar lenses or sometimes even the same type of lens online. But just so you know, the specific models I'll be discussing are for Sony E-mount. For this video, I'll be using the Sony A5100 mirrorless camera. It's a wonderful entry-level mirrorless camera that's around $400 if you find it on sale and outputs full 1080p60, which I'm recording this video in. One last thing to note is that I'm not really covering full frame cameras in this video, so all of the focal lengths we'll be discussing are for APS-C cameras. With that out of the way, let's jump into it. Now, the number one piece of advice I can give to a streamer is to purchase the kit lens bundle with your camera. Now, there are some people out there that say that if you're using a kit lens on a mirrorless camera, that it's not even worth upgrading from a webcam. And I completely disagree with this because right now, up until this point in the video, I'm using the kit lens on the A5100. And I think that looks a heck of a lot better than a Logitech C920 in this same lighting. And one of the biggest benefits of a mirrorless camera are the interchangeable lenses, which means you can upgrade to those lenses at a later time once you learn what you need. When you're purchasing a camera like the A5100, the difference in price between the kit lens versus the body only is about $50, which honestly, you can sell the kit lens for more than that if you decide that you don't need it anymore. Meanwhile, I see so many people going out there and just buying the body only and a $300 lens because they think it's what they need, but then once they set it up in their home, they realize that it doesn't work for their setup and they're out $300. So I honestly think it's worth the $50 to start out with the kit lens and learn how lenses work and then apply that to the lens that you want in the future uh, if you decide that you even need that upgrade. Because like for me, I find the kit lens quality more than adequate and so I just stick with that. Now let's get into a bit more of the specifics on why I recommend the kit lens. So this is the lens that I'm using right now. This is the Sony 16 to 50 millimeter lens. So what's important about this lens is that it is a zoom lens, which means I can go from this view, which is 16 millimeters here, and I can go all the way to 50 millimeters, which is right here. So I have that choice of simply zooming in my lens as I need to depending on what my setup is, which is really useful. Now, why is this so important? Well, if you wanna upgrade your lens and take your quality to the next level, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be purchasing a prime lens. Now, a prime lens means that it only has one focal length. So, an example would be the 35 millimeter 1.8. Now, you only have one focal length to choose from, which means if I want to get this camera closer to my face, I would have to physically move it closer to me because I don't have that zooming option. So this is the number one mistake I see people make because they'll buy a lens like the 35 millimeter, which to uh, demonstrate on this lens is, this is 36 millimeters. So it's basically the same thing. 
And so this, to me, is a little too close for my personal liking. Uh, and so there will be people out there who will buy this lens and then they put it on and they're like, wow, this is way too close. I can't see the rest of my room behind me. What's the problem here? And, and that's it because this is a more zoomed in lens and it stays that way. So the second factor you want to pay attention to when you're purchasing a lens is the maximum aperture because this is going to determine how much background blur you're going to have in the picture behind you. And so to a lot of streamers, that's a very important thing to have in a lens. That's why they're spending several hundred dollars because they want that nice quality of a blurry background and sharp subject. And you need a wider aperture in order to do that. So uh, it's sort of like the rules of golf where the smaller the F number is, the wider and more shallow the aperture will be. So this lens right here is an F3.5 right now. And so everything's roughly in focus. I mean, the background's a little bit blurry, um, but not that crazy. And so we have lenses like the 35 millimeter F1.8, which will be considerably more shallow. And so it'll have a much blurrier background. The problem is, like I said, the equivalent of this, because this is a 35, your lens is going to look like this right here. And so that's something you have to keep in mind. So in this test here, I've got my camera 30 inches away from me on this Ikea Linman desk. So at 30 inches, this is what 16 millimeter looks like. And you just saw what 35 millimeter looks like. So for people who use this type of lens, they're usually going to offset where they put their camera like a tripod in the corner of their room, which I'll get into in a bit. So now I think it's a great time to start the real world lens tests. And so like I said, this camera is 30 inches away from me. So I think the best thing to do here is to just start swapping lenses on this camera so you can see the different effects they have, both in terms of how zoomed in they are and how blurry the background gets. Just so you know, if I get this 10 to 18 lens, you know exactly what the effect of this lens is going to be. So you're not in for any nasty surprises. So to make clear one more time, this is the kit lens 16 millimeter to 50 millimeters F 3.5 to 5.6 lens. And this is at the 16 millimeter fully zoomed out picture. This is the Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4 lens for Sony cameras. Now, this is the same exact field of view as the last lens because this is a 16 millimeter lens and so is the 16 to 50 Sony lens if you have it zoomed out to its widest. So this is the point I'm trying to make here. Now, what you might notice is that the background behind me is a lot blurrier than the other lens and that's because of that f1.4 aperture. So when I switched this lens, I was able to dial the aperture from 3.5 all the way down to f1.4 which makes the background blurry. And what it also allowed me to do was turn down my ISO because I was previously at 1000 and now I'm only at ISO 160, which is gonna give me a cleaner picture. This is a Sony 35 millimeter F 1.8 lens. Now, as you saw earlier, when I zoomed in the kit lens, this is how zoomed in this lens will be and I can't change this unless I physically move it. So. Like I said, right now it's 30 inches away from me, just like the camera's been for this entire video. What you might notice is that the background behind me is much blurrier than even the Sigma 16 millimeter lens before. Now you might be asking, this is an F 1.8 lens and the Sigma is an F 1.4 lens, but didn't you say the lower the number, the more background blur there would be? The more you're zoomed in, the bigger effect aperture has. So to put it simply, if you have an f1.4 aperture at 16 millimeters and an f1.4 aperture at 24 millimeters, the background blur is going to be greater on the 24 millimeters. So in this case, yes, the 16 millimeter has a lower f number, but the fact that this is twice as much zoomed in and it's only a little bit smaller of an f number at the f1.8 instead of f1.4, it's got that increased background blur. So I know it confuses things, but I hope I made it a little bit clear. All right, so this is the Sony 35 millimeter f1.8 lens from a different angle. So instead of having the camera 30 inches away from me on my desk, I now have it about 60 inches away from me on a tripod. So now you can see that more of me is in the frame and it, it's a really good looking picture and you can notice even more background blur behind me because the background is even farther away uh, from where I'm sitting here versus where the other background was. So 
Uh, just want to show that if you do have the setup that supports it, you can get an amazing looking picture with the 35 millimeter lens. However, it's just if you're using it in your classic webcam position, it's probably not the best lens choice for you. This is the Sony 10 millimeter to 18 millimeter f4 lens. Now, this is a little bit more of a specialty lens. It's certainly not cheap, but it provides a really cool effect. This is the same lens that a lot of vloggers use because you can hold your camera out to just arm length and get the super wide field of view around you because it's got that really small 10 millimeter focal length. So you can see my entire room here because it's that wide. Now, this lens, like the kit lens, is also a zoom lens. So if I just adjust this like so, I'm now at 18 millimeters. And so I have a good amount of flexibility with this lens to get more at that normal wide angle and then the ultra wide angle. Um, so because of that F4 uh, number, you're not going to have a lot of background blur, but that's really not what this lens is for. It is really in case you want that like, uh, really environmental shots so you can show off every bit of your setup because this is going to show every part of your room. Um, also keep in mind, I did need to bump the ISO back up for this and I actually bumped it to, uh, I'm actually still just at a thousand. So this might be a scotch darker than the kit lens because the kit lens was at F 3.5 and that this is at F four. So it lets in a little bit less light, but it'll be the same noise level. Uh, so this is what the 10 to 18 looks like. This is the Camlan f1.1 lens for Sony cameras. Now, this is a 50 millimeter lens. So why am I showing this? I don't really expect anybody to use a telephoto lens like this uh, to be that zoomed. I actually had to move back to even get uh, my body in frame because if I'm the 30 inches away from the camera, you're only gonna see the top half of my head. And uh, to be honest, as far as like the focusing goes, I'm already showing way more detail than I originally wanted to do. So I didn't want to get even closer, but you might be asking why I'm showing this lens if it's basically unusable. Well, the thing I wanted to demonstrate is when you're using a shallow depth of field lens that doesn't have autofocus, because one thing you might be inclined to buy on Amazon because they're really cheap are these 35 millimeter lenses or 50 millimeter lenses that are under $100 and they have like an f1.7 or 1.8 aperture. And so you might think this is a dream come true. Well, it's not when they're manual focus only. So I think I've done a pretty good job at staying within the, the focal plane to keep me in focus. But if you notice, if I just lean just three inches, I'm already out of focus here. And if I go more like, you know, six inches to a foot, I'm completely out of focus here. And so when you're dealing with these shallow depths of field, there is very little wiggle room uh, to what will knock you out of focus. And this is why I prefer Sony over Canon because most Canon cameras, you have to disable autofocus in order to have clean HDMI out. So if you're looking to use any type of shallow lens, the second you lean forward like this, only my ear is in focus and that's really rough. And so if you can train yourself to sort of sit in one position and that you're not going to bob back and forth, then I guess you can get away with spending the, the little money. But honestly, you know, if you look at the Sigma where it's 400 versus spending a hundred for this, I would honestly just save up a little bit more so you could just get that, uh, autofocus. So I hope those real world lens tests show you the effects that different lenses have on your camera in terms of composition or background separation and give you an inkling as to what lens might be the best for you. Now I know it's a bit of a cop out to say that no lens is perfect for everything because there are going to be all these different types of situations that call for one lens over another, but that's a great thing about interchangeable lens cameras is that, that you have the freedom to do so. Now in terms of what my favorite lens is out of the bunch, I definitely have to go with the Sigma 16 millimeter f 1.4 lens. I just think that for $400, the quality that you get from this is astounding. You know, you have that 16 millimeter wide field of view. Uh, you have that background separation with the F 1.4. Uh, the autofocus is nice and fast, which I really appreciate. Uh, and it's just usable for the typical uh, camera behind your monitor setup, which I think most people are going to go with. So you know, I think that if you pair this with a camera like the Sony a5100, you're in for a fantastic quality stream.
However, maybe your camera isn't 30 inches away from you. Maybe it's over 60 inches away from you and 16 millimeters is just way too wide. Then you'd want to go with something like the 35 millimeter. Or you could go for a lens in between. There are zoom lenses out there or other prime lenses out there that are in the 20 millimeter range or the 24 millimeter range, which will sit right in between these two as far as how zoomed in you are. And so that's why it's so important to go back to my first lesson and you should really use the kit lens to learn what focal length works for you. Once you find that perfect focal length you want, you can base your lens decision off of that. Will every lens have an f1.8 or f1.4 option? No, so that's something that you have to keep in mind. But when you have that kit lens, you can see exactly what you're giving up or trading off by either going with a not perfect focal length or going with a not perfect aperture number. And that's why it's so important to purchase the kit lens with the camera because it's going to give you that experience you need to make that decision. And while you go with a lens like this or this, you can still use the kit lens as a perfectly adequate vlogging camera. Or if you want to take a camera with you when you're on vacation, that's why they have the kit lens because it does so many things very well. And so I think it's completely worth the extra $50 to go with it just so you have that informed buying decision for your next lens. But that'll do it for my recommendations for the best camera lens for live streaming. What's your favorite lens for live streaming? Let me know in the comment section down below. Once again, my name is Steggy, and until my next video, I will catch you guys later.